It's great to be back. I really appreciate the invitation, and I know on behalf of the board and the superintendent and everybody that works and learns uh, at CPS, so we really appreciate the opportunity to try to make our case as to why we need a positive vote on issue 44. I'm going to breeze through this as best I can because I think it, we really enjoy the questioning period more than the speechifying. But, uh, you know me, I'm an old teacher, so I will, I will talk, given the opportunity. Um, it's been, as Bill said, eight years since Cincinnati Public has received new revenue locally. Uh, the last time we did receive new revenue was the primary uh, between Obama and Clinton, as a matter of fact. So we've gone eight years, and during that period of time, generally speaking, Federal funds and state funds have remained flat, but because we've had two great superintendents back to back, Mrs. Blackwell and Mrs. Ronan, and the community has in its heart to support our children, uh, we've had a great decade. And I'd like to review some of this. Some of it will be repeat from the last time I was here, but uh, I'm going to go through it because I want to brag. Uh, we are, as you know, the top urban district in the state. We all together have rebuilt it. Physically, we're the only school district this side of the Mississippi that has completely rebuilt itself. Not one of our children goes to a building that is unhealthy or unsafe or unattractive. We promised the population at that time when that FMP passed that we would have community learning centers. And indeed, out of our 55 schools, we have 44 community learning centers. We lead the world. We lead the world in community learning centers. We have, in this state uh, of Ohio, uh, we have 24 school-based health centers out of our 55 schools. That's more than the entire state of Ohio combined, and there are about 612 districts. So we're proud of that. We're teaching the whole child. That's what you wanted us to do. That's what we're doing. We're in the top five or 10 district nationwide regarding nutrition and choice and availability both during school and before and after school and after in the school year. We also provide, and I think you all remember this, free transportation, whether it's yellow school bus or whether it's with our metro con uh, contract, we do not charge our children to get to and from school because we don't want our families to figure out how to use their quarters on Sunday night, whether to do the laundromat or whether or not to put those quarters towards the bus path. We do not generally have any pay to play for extracurricular because 70% of our student population is free and reduced lunch and their families couldn't afford to pay so that we don't do that. Also, uh, keep in mind that we are the number one provider of quality preschool. We have now 102 units, 1,600 children. We are all of our units are five star rated or will be after the state finishes the, the, the units we just started this summer. We have been doing that for 50 years. So we know how important it is, but we also know we could not provide all that was needed. Not only in the numbers of seats, but also very frankly, the choices that our families require. But we are all committed to preschool promise to the step up to uh, quality, five star, four star, three star rated, and what have you. So that's all been part of it, but we're excited about that opportunity. Also, uh, if you keep in mind, the last three years we've had third grade reading guarantee in Cincinnati, in the state of Ohio, meaning a child, unless they stay test <coughs> properly, they can't advance to fourth grade. Our children, thank you preschool, thank you K-3 teachers, Thank you so much because we've had all three years, 97% or more of our third graders have been judged by the state test to be promotable to fourth grade. That's a suburban percentage, and we're very, very proud of that, and that's something Mrs. Ronan has really championed along the way. We now have, and I graduated 1969 from Aiken. I know that for 25 years we had two different levels of high schools in our district. There was the Walnut, there were the Clarks, the Gambles, what have you. And then there were where most of us went. If you didn't go to Walnut, you were going someplace else. 
Well, it used to not be a difference. Now, through great effort in every one of our high schools, there are at least five AP courses available, and that's expanding. And every one of our children receives at no cost the opportunity to take ACT. And our ACT scores have now risen, even though we have 100% taking it, have now at least reached the national norm. The composite score is not good enough, but it's on the rise, and it is of national uh, the national norm, and it will continue to grow higher. But we can't keep going and making all this great progress unless we have the additional monies that we need. And the additional monies are determined that we needed. We didn't just determine it, but indeed CBC, the Cincinnati Business Community, paid a great deal of money to a subsidiary of Ernst & Young to review our books. And we opened them. They reviewed them. And they told us how much money we would be short, how much money we needed, how long the levy should be, and, and they were incredibly impressed with our treasurer and our superintendent, of course, because we were willing to open the books and we wanted and sought their advice. They decided and we decided upon their recommendation, but mostly upon the recommendation of Mrs. Ronan and our treasurer, Ms. Wagner, that we would ask for a five-year levy that's 7.93 mil. It's a huge ask, but we really need it, and we think we validated that need. It will generate $48 million <coughs> annually for five years, each of those five years. $33 million will go to K-12 for all intents and purposes, and I'll tell you what those priorities are in a minute. And then $15 million will go to the preschool prompts. Some of that will go to Cincinnati Public, and some of that will go to other public and private providers who are participating in the step up to quality and they will then be able to expand the seats available and the way that money will work for preschool is not simple but I'm going to try to make it simple in my own mind if you have a three four or five star rated preschool not child care preschool you will be able to have, as a provider, monies coming to you based upon the number of children that you have on a daily basis. That money that's coming to you on a daily basis, so to speak, will be determined based upon a couple of things. The income level, the quality le income level of that family, the quality level of that school. And then what will happen, it will be a slump, somewhat of a sliding scale. But any one of those dollars from Preschool Promise are going to be last dollars in. For example, if that child and that family receive already monies and subsidy from the state, maybe they have special needs, that money will go toward that total. And, and then we will build on that total. So last dollar in. And based on the quality of the provider, based upon the wealth of that family. The other piece is, if you are not three star and above, you will be able to receive grant money. And the grant money will go towards you stepping up to quality. Maybe it's being able to pay your staff more. Maybe it's being able to help educate your staff. Maybe it's providing some of the physical checkoffs that you need in order to step up to quality. So that will be an expansive use there. CPS will collect the money because it, we're the taxing agent. Ultimately, we're responsible for it. When we collect the money, it will be placed in an earmarked line item preschool. We will then look at all the numbers of students that are available for preschool and everywhere, not just at CPS, but within the geographic boundary of the district. And a certain amount of money will then be determined as to what that sliding scale will be. We will keep money that pertains to us, but our kids will be figured on the same equation as everybody else, and then what other money we have goes to United Way. United Way will then be the management agent, if you will, for the non-CPS providers, as well as the management uh, agent, if you will, for providing the quality grants as well. Finally, as we look at this uh, effort with regarding what are our priorities, our priorities are the priorities that uh, the community helped us determine. 
There are several. Reducing the city's digital divide, meaning we are going to be providing all kinds of computers, technology, and what have you for our children. That's a major part of the 33 million that we will keep that is not preschool. Preparing our children to be college bound and career ready. Very, very important. Very important. Continuing to improve our essential services because we have an ever expanding enrollment. Remember, from the last time I was here, the state predicted we'd have 28,000 kids. We've got 35,000 kids. People are coming home to CPS. People are coming back to the city. Just last year, 600 children left the Cincinnati Charter Schools. And we got most of them. And we are very excited about that. We want them all. And the reality for us is besides those priorities, keep in mind that we want to accelerate, if, you, if we can, kindergarten readiness through establishing greater and more numerous quality preschool seats. Finally, and this has been an inspiration as an old homer as I am, and I, and I went to Sailor Park, College Hill, and Schwab, and Aiken, um, and so proud of being a CPS graduate. The number one priority for our families when we did the polling and when we did the surveys was to reinvigorate the heart and mind of our district, which is our neighborhood schools. We want our neighborhood schools to be as high quality as possible, and more particularly, we want our neighborhood schools to look like our neighborhoods, and we want our, our magnets to look like our district. And we are ready, and we are needing this money we validated it, and even for preschool, not just relying upon our own senses and sensibilities, but the, again, the business community hired Rand Corporation to do a complete landscape study of what preschool looks like in Cincinnati. And they have not only provided that information demographically, but they've also provided us with an implementation plan. So it's well sourced well needed and very frankly i'm not going to be a homer again i think it's well deserving for our children and their families and the staff that has worked to get us here and i honestly think that this renaissance that we're all experiencing in greater cincinnati because remember too our district is larger than just the city i think we started the renaissance when you all took a real big vote on that fmp the facilities master plan and we are on the move and we need your help. Thank you.